period, whaling. Whaling's our new senior safety rep. He's worked out on our crews for 31 years. I'm trying to train Waylon as much as I can before I leave. The other guys will be training him for a long time. 31 years of experience climbing poles out there, but you know what? I don't know what Waylon really knows. He may have been a slacker for 31 years and never listened to anybody. He may do everything wrong. And I know you don't. But he may have. Or he wouldn't be here. Uh, so when you get a new man on your crew, he could have been here forever. How do you know he knows anything? How do you know? They don't. You don't. You got to test him. You got to watch him. You got to make sure he's doing it the right way. And those crazy accidents, and I hate the word accident because they're not accidents. Somebody didn't do their job. That's all it is to it, simple and simple as can be. Somebody wasn't doing their job. I want to tell you about an accident of one of our linemen. Uh, it was about 13 years ago, and he works in the safety department. He was out there installing a transformer, working on a transformer, and for some reason he didn't have his rubber gloves on. Why he didn't have them on when he was within reaching distance of an energized power line? He doesn't know. He did it. And he reached up and touched the high voltage line. Well, now Earl is short one arm, short one leg, burned all over. I forget how long he was in the hospital the first time, but he's not the same. You know, some days he has to ride his wheelchair to get in the hospital and such a thing. Thirteen years later, I was talking to Earl last year about his electrical accident, and unfortunately, the results of those electrical accidents last a lifetime. He was telling me that every year since he contacted that high voltage power line, he has had to go to the hospital one or two years or two times a year for different surgeries so everything will function right. And he said he would have to be doing that the rest of his life. How did Earl get to the, how did Earl get the power line? Uh, I'm looking at you. Attention. Not paying attention. <laughs> Working too fast. Now, Earl doesn't work fast. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not paying attention. He knew his job. Remember how long Earl had been in Lyman? I think eight years, maybe. Complacent. You know, he made that. <laughs> you know, the old statistics many years ago, and I don't know what the new ones are now. But the old ones were, a lineman, if he was going to get burned, it'd probably be about seven years. Because he knows the job now. He's comfortable on the job. And now he's going to probably try to take some shortcuts. Lack of days. I found a couple of things in people that have the word accident. I know what I'm doing. It's not going to happen to me. I can take shortcuts and nobody can watch. Not a good thing. Y'all had a recent accident, that's why we're out here today. I don't know all the details on that accident. But tell me what the rules are. The man is up in the place working. What's the other man supposed to be doing? Spot him. Watch him until when? He's, back on the ground. He's on the ground. Should have been watching. Lives are saved every day in our company because the guy on the ground standing there watching the man up in the pole, and sometimes they just get disoriented or doing something too busy, and they get in that power line. If our man on the ground was doing his job, he saves him. If he's not, he may be hurt. I got to tell y'all a good story about a uh, cable TV crew. This is a classic. They're parked up on a railroad track with their little bucket truck. Got their PTO operating the 
Guys up here working out of the bucket by the poles near the railroad. The spotters, they're both sitting in the cab listening to the good time radio. You don't want to believe this. Tell me if you don't believe it. Okay. I want you to know everything I say is true or could be true. The guys sitting in the cab listening to the radio hit the neutral, I mean hit the clutch, and somehow the truck rolled down there and got it into the power line. Were they doing their job? No, they weren't doing their job. I'd have fired them if I was their boss. They're not doing their job of taking care of the man in the bucket. And a man in the bucket. Let me ask you this. Do you have two out warps in the field here? All of you? When you go out to a job and there's two of you out there, do y'all have a tailboard meeting? Say, this is how we want to do the job. This is how it's done. The hard way to do this job is kind of down. This is right. This is what you do. Stop and have another meeting. Yeah, I know we're all fresh at the time. We gotta hurry, 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 hurry. But we don't hurry enough to get this one to hurt. Okay? Now I'm gonna ask y'all a few highly technical questions. I know all of you know the answers. What is electricity? Y'all do work with electricity. What is electricity? <coughs> what are electrons? Electricity is a flow of electrons through a conductor. What is a conductor? Doesn't look like a highly intelligent man. What is a conductor? Uh, Can I touch you? Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> a conductor? Yeah, what is a conductor? Uh, copper. Um, the, I don't know the technical definition of it. Yeah, there you go. I'll tell you another story about non insulating <laughs> items. Anything can be a conductor if you put enough of the to it. It doesn't matter. But you missed the answer to the question. I'm trying to give you one of these the very good pins. The pathway. What is a conductor? Not the pathway. What is a conductor? I don't want you to ever forget this. <laughs> Any item that allows you to go uh, you're close. Okay, everybody raise your right hand. <laughs> raise your right hand. No democracy in here. I am a conductor. I am a conductor. Okay. Since you didn't answer the question properly, I'm going to give you that screwdriver so you remember. And if I raise my hand, if I raise my hand, I want to hear you say, I am a conductor, okay? okay. All right. Okay. You got it. So we know electricity is the three current. We all, we all know. You don't have to memorize this stuff. Voltage current resistance. Voltage used, unit used to measure electrical pressure. And you all know that voltage does not kill, right? Correct. But it plays its part in the electrical contact in that the higher the voltage, the more current, the killing factor, it will drive through. But in and of itself, it won't do a thing. You can sit that bird up on the power line. If you can jump from this ground and touch, get up and touch one power line, it ain't going to hurt. So none of us can jump that high, OK? What I want you to know about this is the National Safety Council, not Greg, states that AC voltages, just like on our power lines out there in these lights up here, 37 and a half volts and above can drive enough current through you to kill you. I'm a conductor. I'm a conductor. Just him. See, so y'all are not listening. <laughs> we may make you throw your sandwich away. Okay. I'm a conductor. We're getting it, Waylon. Quick learn. <laughs> what did I say? What AC voltage drive up something to kill you? Kill you already got. Seven 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 half half AC, six volts DC. <clears throat> Not much at all. <clears throat> Not much at all. And that, the conditions have to be right for that to kill you. But that's the lowest number that 
the council that comes up with it. Let's see it. Okay, let me ask you this. You're out there. Your boom hits a power line. A power line falls down on your truck. You're in the boom. You're sitting in the truck. What do you do? <laughs> well, if you're still operating the boom, maybe you can swing the boom away and break electrical contact. Maybe you can. If you're in the truck, what do you do? Don't get Stay out. Stay in the truck. Stay in the truck. That's right. You're just like that bird sitting on the power line. You're at the same voltage level as the truck. And one of the secrets of electricity is if you're at the same voltage, current does not flow. So you're sitting there and you're all right. The truck all of a sudden catches on fire, you got to get out. There's no option. You open that door, you put the feet on the running board, hop with both feet at the same time, making sure you're not touching the ground and the vehicle at the same time, and you get off of the seat. What's the next thing you need to do, long way? accidents happen like this more than one time where people die. There's a problem on the truck. We've had other workers. We have people passing by and see there's a problem. They go to try to help and they get killed. You got to stay away. When you go up to that truck and touch it, you may be the path. Now here's another really story and I want to talk about the rest of these things in a moment. A crane operator hits a power line. He, he didn't jump out of the crane. He held on and put his foot on the ground. He's laying there in serious condition. Two other guys working with him. They came up. One starts administering CPR to the guy. The other one comes up. Leans on the leans on his back and touches the crane. All three of them. All three dead. Lord have mercy. How can you do that? Because I'm trying to help my buddy. You're not helping your buddy if you're dead too. Okay, so we know Moby does not kill. kill. What kills us? Current. Current. The flow rate of those electrons through the nose. One tenth of an amp. The power that it takes to operate one of those little four watt night light bulbs on a 120 volt circuit is all the current that it takes to cost you your life. And that's not much. I'm a conductor. <laughs> the current is what kills you, not the voltage. The other term is resistance, the opposition to the flow of current. Now this guy could have just had a bath, has nice clean clothes on, he's dry, has rubber sole shoes on, and picks up an old metal case drill. Y'all even have any of those anymore? They're pretty much obsolete. 
But, uh, you know, I got one from my grandpa, and the drill, uh, it has only two prongs. It doesn't have the third prong on there. And what's that third one for? Ground. It's not the ground. It's the grounding conductor. How y'all like that? Okay. It's the grounding conductor. And what does it do? Should the drill fall in your hand, it takes the stray current back to the service panel instead of through you, but if that third prong is not there, it'll zap. But we're gonna play you come up here and you drop the drill 50 times. The hot wire on the drill is touching the case of the drill, and the drill still works, and that's very possible. It happens. So you turn your little drill on, and because you just had your bath, and his resistance is about 350,000 ohms, and we're getting 110 volts here at the drill. How much current is that? Divide, no, no, it doesn't mean. 100, divide 110 by 350,000. That's right. Less than 1 1,000th of an amp. Here you go. Use that answer right there. You go. Less than 1 1,000th of an amp is traveling through him, and he may not even feel it. But now he goes out and works out in the field here all day. He's hot. He's sweating. His feet are soaked, so he takes his boots off. His resistance that was 350,000 ohms this morning can be down to 1,000 this afternoon. And he picks that same drill up, and what happens? Divide 110 volts by 1,000 ohms. And now he's got more than that. And it doesn't have current traveling through him, and it may kill him. Are your tools that you use out there on the job in shape? Yes, sir. Or are you one of those hiders? I love this drill. It's not working right, but I'm going to hide it when they come and inspect it. And that happens too. Well, I'll tell you this. If your drill or your refrigerator anything shocks you, there's something wrong with it. It's giving you an early warning, and it's saying, there's something wrong with it. Come up dry and clean, I may just shock you, you may not even feel it. Come back and take your dirty, and I may kill you. Get shot, have it prepared, have it replaced, have it destroyed, but don't use it again. Okay, that's all my spill on that stuff. Y'all work by our power lines all the time. Y'all can see those big 345,000 volt power lines out there on the big tower. Y'all usually don't work near those. I think y'all work under some. And you may hear time you touch your truck, you get a little tingle. That's just the static coming off those lines. It won't hurt you, but it can sure make you hurt yourself. They're up out of the way so you can't get to them. Now, the rest of our power lines are distribution lines. One down the street behind your house, behind this building, almost anywhere you look. They start at 7,200 volts, and they range up to 34,500 volts. <laughs> The big difference between the 12 kV and the 35 kV, so those are the two different voltages we have, is that on the 12 kV, the one, two, or three hot wires is up on the top. The neutral is down on the bottom. You come out here in this 35 kV circuit, you look, you see the neutral or the stack here up on top. And it can be one, two, or three hot wires down below here. There's three. And we get some people out there thinking the neutral's always on the bottom, and that is not the case. And you make contact with that bottom wire there or any of the three hot wires. The chances of surviving are not real good. Now, what do y'all want to ask this? Um, I need some conductor. I'll <laughs> <laughs> jump guard there. 21 minutes and he's almost forgotten. <laughs> How long are y'all going to remember anything I tell you? Okay. This little wire or this big wire, which is the most dangerous? The little wire, I think it is too. Because most people think it doesn't carry as high a voltage as the large one. But they are equally dangerous. They both could have the same voltage on them. The one is little because it doesn't serve as many people. The one is big because it serves more people and carry more load. So the wire size has nothing to do with what it can do to you. Y'all work up near our power lines, working on all 
different planes you have. What do you know about the high voltage power lines? Something very important you need to walk out of here in your mind forever. They move. You're right. They're up there. They're moving now. The winds are blowing them back and forth. The temperature, they're moving up and down. They're not static. They're always in motion. And that's why the distances are applied for safe clearances when you're out there working. Those lines are moving. Your equipment's moving. All kinds of things are going on. And OSHA says that it is safest for everyone on power lines, 50,000 volts below, like all the wooden poles that are everywhere, that you need to be 10 feet away. I understand Seth says y'all require 20 feet. That's even better. There are some companies that even require further distance. But if you have to work closer than 10 feet ever, you have to get with us. Stuff we may have to get with you. Look at your cold dead body out there. So y'all didn't answer my question. What do you know about all these high voltage power lines? If y'all don't start answering questions, I'll tell you jokes and you won't like them. They are pretty sad jokes. They are all spare and uncovered conductors. There is no protective covering on them, no matter what they look like. They may look black when you're looking out there. The insulation is the air gap between you and those wires. And if you breach that air gap, that's how you're going to get yourself hurt. So make sure you stay 10 feet away. When we go out to the trailer, we're going to show you a ground going up to the 71 volt power line on our trailer. And you're going to see that that electricity on the power line is work around all the time. Don't come back and tell your boss, that electricity jumped 10 feet off the power line and hit my boom. Three eighths of an inch. That's how far it's going to mark off. You had to have something within three eighths of an inch of this power line out here to initiate the arc. That big 345 volt power, but you're not going to be anywhere near. Yeah, it'll arc off a couple of feet. These lines don't do that. So we all know these lines are. Well, they are insulated by air. Boom. They're moving. I'm going to give you this one when I point at you. What are you going to tell me? They're they, <laughs> That's me. They are bare. Power lines are bare. Okay. You remember that? Yes, sir. I'm a conductor. Man, these guys are sharp. Well, I don't know about that. You remember it after 24 minutes. Yeah. Okay, we know this high voltage power line here. You come up, and you see a sense of one of those power lines laying on this fence out here. How far is the fence in, uh, energized? Everybody, I want everybody to do this. With your really ugly face. That's <laughs> We don't know! That daddy on the fence may be energized all the way around this building. Don't touch that anything because it might kill you. Okay? If you knock down the power line down, what do you do? Go move it. Mm -hmm. All center point energy. That's right. Don't try to touch that wire. I swear this guy's on the street 40 years ago. We were over <coughs> driving up to an accident. Car hit a pole. Three high voltage power lines down on the ground. And before we got there, we could see his pick, a bystander's picking the wire up, setting it on the curve. Picking the wire up, setting it on the curve. Heading back to pick this wire up, and the circuit came back up. This cup that doesn't get to the first time, that circuit, those relays, you start going through its cycles, and it may come back up. But that man that had that wire in his hand, there wouldn't have been much left there. You can't look at a power line and tell if it's energized or not. And I'll tell you about that about phone and cable lines. As they go down, we have instances where a car hit a pole or something, our line is down, our high voltage line down, touching the phone, taking TV. It may not go down there. Maybe 
three blocks away is where it finally gives up the calls. If it's the ground so you're not going to see the calls, that phone and cable TV line can be electrical in your job. You hadn't tested it, you don't know. And how do you know when, our, when one of our power lines is being in your How do you know when it's safe to touch? You don't. Call us, that's right. How do, how do our linemen stay alive, Waylon? Grounded. If it's not grounded, it's not dead. If it's not ground, blend on the ground, one of our crews is back to physically grounded. Don't touch our power lines. Uh, we'll talk about low those power lines we go outside here in just a moment. Now, we're going to ask, I'm going to ask all y'all this question again. I wish I had my camera. How do we know when the power lines are dead? Everybody give me the face. They didn't make very good things. All right. But you know, you're a likable guy here. Seth, is he worth anything? I don't know. See, I don't know. You may be the best or the worst. See, that's why you have to become your crew. Who, who of y'all work with you guys for? Three or four or five or six of them. How do you know what these work? You don't know until you test them. And you do the same thing they come to you. You don't want them killing you. Remember, they're your life's in their hands, too. All right, I'm tired of doing this in here. I'm a conductor. There, there. Let's go outside. On this side of the trailer, we'll get this finished and get y'all out here by 9 o'clock. Okay, y'all here? Oh. Hello. Hello. Here it is. Now you can hear me. Uh, someone asked me on the way out here, how come those high voltage power lines are bare? Well, there are a lot of reasons why they are bare. Uh, one is we follow the National Electrical Safety Code to install our power lines. And yes, we could put a covering on them. Uh, but according to the code, it is safer for the general public for these lines to be bare. Uh, because if they were covered, and we've had people think that, I had a guy out in Newport Subdivision, he thought they were covered because the shadows on them, you know, they can make them look like they're black with the covering on them. He got his aluminum ladder, put it up against the uh, power lines to trim his trees, and uh, he lost both his legs. Fortunately, at least he survived. So, false sense of security, because if they were insulated and it had a pinhole in them, on high voltage, a pinhole, as you'll see on this glove up here, is enough to let enough current travel through you to kill you in the snap of a finger. Another reason we do not insulate or put a protective covering on them is because when they fall and hit the ground, most of the time it'll blow the fuse or the breaker at the substation. If they had a protective covering on them, they just lay there waiting for someone to come up and touch them. So that's why we don't choose to use a protective covering on our high voltage power lines. Now, everybody tell me, what the hell, you, you got the Barney shirt on. <laughs> what, name me one piece of safety gear you have to have when you're out there at work. Hard hat. Because of the situation? I mean, hard hat. Hard hat? Hard hat. Hard hat. Gentleman in the red. Safety vest. Gloves. Safety vest. He's got his on. <laughs> yeah, if we're working near roadways, we have to have our safety vest on. If we're in somebody's business and everybody wears safety vest on, we'll have ours on. Uh, safety glasses like I've got on. Y'all wear uh, safety shoes? I don't know. Steel yes, sir. Okay, steel toes. Cones for your trucks when you park. Or do you think, oh, maybe 20 minutes later I'll put my cones out. Maybe I'll just be here a minute. Don't get yourself killed out there or something dumb like that. Put the cones out. I used to work for another man. If we stopped and I wasn't putting the cones out while the truck was still rolling, I'd get my tail in trouble. He was a stickler for those cones. Use your safety gear. Do you buy your hard hat? Do you buy your vest? Who buys it? The company buys it. Use it.
There's no excuse not to use it. If you're not using it and you get hurt, you might get fired. Y'all have heard of OSHA, right? We talked about that. There's a general duty clause in OSHA which states your employer will provide you a safe working place. And if he doesn't and you get hurt, well, he may have to pay, pay something for it. But something a lot of people don't know in that general duty clause, paragraph B says, the employee is responsible for his job and all the equipment he is supposed to wear and work safely. And if you're not being safe and you get yourself hurt, that may just be too bad for you. You may not get a thing. You may not have a job. The employer is not responsible for your acts when you're doing something against safety policies. A couple of things I want to show you here. You know you're aware of our low boat power lines. Most of those have a protective covering on them. There's still a few out there that are bare. But the protective covering on these is to protect the wires, not units. If you got up there, and maybe you're at your home painting. I don't know if y'all work near these on your job. Paint your gutters, paint the fascia board. If these are in your way, you're afraid of them, call us, we'll let them down. We'll put them back up when you're finished. Because if you touch this, and this low voltage just has a pinhole in it, you'll probably only get shocked. But we've been out on lots of accidents where the folks are painting or doing little things around the house and they touch these, and what are you going to do when you get shocked? Jump. You're going to jump. Then you break your ankle or your shoulder. So we've had those. If this has a large bare spot on it and you happen to grab it, then what happens on the low voltage? It makes the muscles contract. And once those muscles contract, there's not a soul strong enough to open that hand as long as the current is flowing. And if you can't open your hand, it starts sweating almost instantly. The resistance goes down, more current flows, and then it's going to exceed that tenth of an app. Your heart's going to go into ventricular fibrillation flutter, no oxygen to the brain in four to six minutes, then you will become brain dead or you will die. And you may think you got your partner over there paying attention. You may be going, well, nothing's coming out of your mouth. The muscles in your throat might be contracted and you think you're screaming, help. But your partner may never know until you're dead. What happens when you hit the high voltage power line? There's a muscular, muscular contraction. But it is so severe, it blows you off, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Oscar, are you ready to start taking the grounds off this trailer? Does any of y'all remember the voltage on these lines up here? The top's the neutral. Any one of those three wires below that very top, they're 19,920 volts. If you measure between any two of those top three wires, you'd find the voltage to be 34,500. Oscar is taking the grounds off of what did we say earlier about grounding? It is there to protect you. If it is not grounded, it's not dead. Again, we all have our protective gear on. We've got these 100,000 volt rubber mats we stand on when we touch the trailer when it's ungrounded. So that if I'm touching this trailer and it falls, and it has faulted before, that me and the trailer at the same voltage is like me, like the bird standing on the power line, I won't get hurt. But if I touch this trailer and it falls, and I'm touching this concrete, concrete is a good conductor, then I'm going to get myself hurt. We've got the truck and trailer bonded together to make sure they're at the same voltage. You can see the black wire running out there to an earth ground, so if there's any stray voltage on this trailer, it's going to go there. We protect ourselves. Hey, you know, I only got a few weeks left. Do I want to die now? Nope. I don't think so. I want to get y'all social security. Man. <laughs> oh, Lord, that's a good time. Okay, you ready, Oscar? Okay, you can see the red lights on. We now know that this trailer's hot and energized, right? I don't see any red lights on those lines up there, do you? It's just a gift. What would Dirty Harry say? You feel lucky? 
Don't feel good. Okay. Red lights on. We know it's hot. Red lights off. Uh, we know it's not energized, but it's still be a electrical conductor. Hot. 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 Okay. This is 7,200 volts. The lowest high voltage we have in our service area. The difference on this and electrical and an actual contact is we're using the capacitor over here as a giant resistor to limit the current to less than 3 amps. You get out here in our power lines, you have thousands of amps of fault current. So what you're going to be seeing is a lot smaller. First thing I'm just going to do is draw some marks for you. Not getting much of an arc because the wind's blowing the arc out. So that arc you're looking at is the current traveling through the free air. That arc, and not this one, this is probably about 15,000 degrees Fahrenheit, but an arc off one of these power lines up here with just about unlimited current brings us about 35,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is four times the surface heat of the sun. That arc you're looking at is what's traveling down through your body or over your body. And the normal results will be third degree burn. Get yourself dismembered. Maybe six degree burns where it can burn up some of the bones inside of you. Or you die. None of them are good outcome. Every side I told you, you'd have to be within three eighths of an inch. It doesn't jump off the power line. Next thing is we have a dry rope. And occasionally we get somebody to think, well, I saw center point energy throwing ropes over their power lines. And no, we don't throw ropes over our energized high on the power line. We're not stupid. We use the right equipment. But somebody occasionally says, yeah, I don't want to wait for them. I don't want to pay for them. Throws a rope over a power line and pulls it out of the way. And sometimes they're lucky, and sometimes they're not. If that rope was dry and clean, they might get away with it. So we've been out here some mornings on that dry, clean rope where it has become a conductor because of the high humidity air, and it becomes a conductor like the damp rope there. Anybody want to be holding that? Yeah, okay. Next thing is the tree lamp. And in many cases, if you're around your house, the trees are high at the power line. We well, get so many homeowners drop the trees down in the power line. And trees in our service area are good conductors year round. So if there's trees up there, or maybe you're raising your boom. There's probably most cases y'all are working if you don't have that. But a lot of times we get contractors with trees there, and they get their boom, and they push the tree, boom into the tree, tree the power line, and someone gets hurt. And uh, we aren't uh, tracking right now, and they aren't closer. Did y'all look out the top of that tree limb when he first did it? If you did, you'll see steam coming out of the top of that, and moisture coming out of the top of that, and that's exactly what it's doing inside of your body. Next thing is the hot dog, similar and meat comes into your fingers and then you touch the power line with your finger. Make sure no one else uses it. 
this last finger up here has a pinhole Oscar's put in it. This gets a good reason why we don't inflate the high voltage. There you go. You did. How much is it? Think about it. And all those plans. And all those people you love and love you. Your history. Last thing up here is this cap. Just to show you that your clothing may catch on fire if you get in the contact situation. That was not water. That is a non-conductor. I don't use water on power lines. I am not stupid no matter what you may say. Oscar's going to discharge the capacitor. You may see it discharge up there. No, it didn't get to see it discharge this time. But now he is putting the grounds back on the trailer. And we don't know if the truck or trailer are energized or not. They still could be because of the charge on this electrical equipment. Hopefully everything worked, but maybe it didn't. Did it work, Wheeler? Maybe, maybe not. Did y'all notice this? Where are you at? Are you hiding from me? Hey, where would my conductor go? I'm a conductor. Okay. I, I noticed, some of y'all probably noticed this nice, beautiful face here. When I was turning that breaker on and off, where was my face? Away from that breaker. The breakers explode. You bet they will. If that breaker explodes and my face is in front of it, it's going to be melting holes through the front of this panel. It's going to have plastic running at me, high voltage, I mean, uh, copper going through me, fire shooting at me. Turn that face away. Tell your family to turn their face away. You don't want anybody getting injured like that. Okay. I pretty much talked about everything I want. Now, I will, we will open this pad mount transformer so you can see in it. I don't know if y'all do any underground stuff or not, but we'll open that old pad mount transformer so you can look in it when you come up here in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to be passing out safety brochures for you. We're going to give you some look up and live stickers. And Oscar, what are you giving them, Oscar? Cousins. <coughs> And what do y'all think those koozies say? Look up and live. When you start setting that truck up, know where those power lines are so that when you're operating your truck, it won't get near those power lines. Setting up property is important. Before you set it up, know they're there. Before you work in your backyard, know they're there. And the other one says, stay 10 feet away from power lines. And you'll go by Oscar in a few minutes and he'll give you one of those. Uh, does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask? I've talked about all kinds of stuff, but I'm sure y'all have at least two or three highly... I'm a conductor. <laughs> Will you ever forget that? No. Okay. No. Y'all have some questions you'd like to ask me. I work hard to get you out of here on time. We've got 12 minutes left. No questions? You were talking about uh, the spot and the uh, spot you know, makes contact with get out, you gotta use both feet on the, uh, the jumper thing to jump off. If you have rubber sole shoes on, does that affect anything? Your rubber sole shoes on a high-voltage power line are probably just metal. You know, if you had rubber sole shoes that were, you know, good and dry, and you touch a, a low-voltage power line, it may have raise your resistance high enough that it won't hurt you. 
but on that high voltage, it'll just burn your dead gum boots off. I have seen it uh, at an accident where the guy touched the power line. He was cleaning out a uh, one of those sewer plants. He has like the, uh, I call it the swimming pool skimmer. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And he backed it up and hit the power line. They built the plant under our power line, and we didn't know it. And it burned both his feet off. And his boots were, and his feet were like 30 feet away over here in the past burning when we got here. Yeah, those, those shoes just won't do you any good. Anyone else? Hey, Greg. Sir. How safe are those uh, insulated buckets when they get into a power line? Well, <laughs> I couldn't tell you that because we don't have insulated buckets. Our boom is insulated. Our bucket is made out of fiberglass. Do y'all ever, do we ever use any uh, bucket liners? Some contracts that we don't. We don't use bucket liners. If you put a bucket liner in there, it will be insulated. We don't use them. Uh, we did have, and I don't remember how many years ago this was, we had one of our men, he was set up. He was working on something, and I, I don't remember the details. But he needed to reach something further over. And he got his boom, and he spent, and he had it stretched all the way out, just so he didn't have to reset his truck up. He set the bucket on top of the neutral, contact the high voltage power line. And I don't remember what happened to him. It's been so long. But no, they are not insulated. Our booms are in certain spots, so they won't conduct back to ground. But our buckets are not insulated, and I don't know if y'all have liners. Don't set it on the neutral end. Try to touch something hot. It may, uh, it may turn you into a weenie. Okay? Somebody, come on, give me a good question. This guy looks highly intelligent. A white shirt on. Looks like he's the boss? <laughs> you are the boss, right? No, You're not the boss. One of them. One of them. What's your question? No, not why did I hire this guy here. <laughs> <laughs> no question. Anyone else? Okay. I appreciate y'all listening to us. I know I have told you a lot of things today. Doesn't take much electricity or voltage to drive the current through you to kill you. But the only answer is know where they are. Stay away from them. If you're in doubt about what you're doing or how close you should be, get with your boss here and he can get with us and we'll work with you. We don't want you to get hurt. 